All right, don't get to the light. Get used to the light. <laughs> don't get to the light. Don't get used to the light. Uh, because as I leave, my brother is arriving and his headlights are flashing directly on me. So it's, it's not going to be this bright for always. But I'm here to talk to y'all about Star because I don't know why, honestly, because y'all don't watch this, this review. I think this is my lowest <laughs> watched review. Who cares? See, he turned off, turned off the lights and this is where we are. Let me get on by. Walk on, walk on, walk on, walk on by. Hey, hey. A little piece of, uh, is that Shaka? Shaka and, uh, maybe Rufus and Shaka, or it might be Shaka and somebody else. Who cares at this point? Just know that Shaka's involved. It's a nice rainy evening. Y'all don't care. Y'all here to talk about Star. So Star is still S-T-E-E-L, all credit to Tisha Campbell Martin, pregnant. She still is. And I'm just like, that's really, this, this really is what it is. It is what it is. I thought we was going to, you know, wake up and it was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Salt and pepper and heavy D up in the limousine. Uh, but no, it seems to be the, the case. And so I had to do some Googles and find out that uh, Jude Demarest is actually pregnant, so they just, uh, they just put that in there. Honestly, I don't know, like, for the sake of the show, I don't know what we're going, going to do with this. I feel like they could have let Alex keep her baby, we could just be a bunch of mamas. Um, except for Simone, because she's a lesbian. We're, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Um, but the owner of the label, for some reason, they keep showing us that they swing, or they, they, enjoy sexual partners together and apart or, or together at least they haven't made mention of apart except for i mean he brought the, the two ladies home he brought them home for the two of them but then she was like nah you go ahead but she knew about it so i don't know if we you know if the rules are that they can have sexual partners as long as they know about them or what what's the tea with simone but we'll we'll get there eventually i guess i don't know girl uh for some reason, Cassie and Lance Gross character, who I can't remember, I don't know his name right now. Oh, it almost, it was almost there, but it's gone. Anyway, for some reason, they linking up to create a record label or a record experience, music experience of some sort. And I find myself sitting squarely in the seat of don't care. I find myself also sitting squarely in the seat of, why Brandy can't never be on the TV show where I like her? Because I didn't like her on Moesha. Love in the morning, new day is dining, it's me and all, and that's wonderful, that's cute for you. And I know your best friends are always on your mind. Uh, but Moesha was, she was aggravating. She was aggravating boots as an adult. When I go back and watch Moesha, I want to whoop her. But as a child, I always rooted for um, Kim and Nisi. Because why y'all, what, what, I don't know, Moesha was just draining. I need to take the free, no, I'm gonna take the road. Ooh, the ghetto, I need gas, boots. Oh, the ghetto, the ghetto. Anyway, um, where am I going? Yeah, I'm going this way. Uh, I, I just, I want to watch a TV show with Brandy where I like the character. That's what I want. Because Moesha was disrespectful to Dee and, they, you know, I'm not even going to get into the Moesha discord. It's a lie. Um, let me stay in my lane. For some reason, they've changed Girl the Ghetto. Maybe if I drove a little slower, but no. For some reason, they changed the background music to I bring me, get my, bout my, go hard. Look at another like me. Boy, it's not. I bring me, whose love is the tightest, whose kisses the nicest. Me, whose touch is the rightest. Me, me, got a bad bitch. <laughs> that's me, sad bitch. That's me, mad bitch. Still me, lame bitch. Ain't me. <laughs> what you get is what you see. Um, <laughs> They changed the background music for that song. And it, it don't hit as hard, it's boring. It's, don't do the, I don't like it. I don't want it, keep it, uh, but whatever. Alex is still going through it. She's on Instagram looking at, uh, I wanna call her Ebony, but I know her name is Bianca, but I wanna call her Ebony. She looks like an Ebony to me. She looks like an Ebony, statuesque and, and gorgeous. Just, just, she just looks like an Ebony. I mean, no, no shade to Bianca's, but she just doesn't look like a Bianca to me. Every Bianca I've ever seen was light-skinned. Or white, or Italian. No, a lot of Italian Bianca's. The point remains that she looked like an ebony unto me, unto my eyes. But whatever. Anyway, she going through her Instagram and reflecting about the 15 minutes that she knew her. And it's just like, I'm sorry for your loss, but you really, you getting off the plane before she did, like unless they just left her on the plane last, she was probably going to die either way. 
and you got to understand it. Them getting you off the plane wasn't like a trade for her life. I understand that they recognized you. I don't know um, how famous you are to be recognized like that, but you still living in the hood. It, it was weird to me how the, um, the firefighter knew who you were, but you still living in your boyfriend, grandmama house, or however y'all doing it. It, 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 I just don't know. I don't know. It felt weird to me, but the thing is, if Ebony was supposed to die in that plane crash, Ebony was supposed to die in that plane crash. And I know people have survivor's remorse and, you know, PTSD and guilt and, and all of that. And it's not a lot of rational things you can say to make it be what it is. But it is what it is. If that was her time to go and it wasn't your time, that's just how it is. Like, nothing you can do about it. Nothing can change it. That's just what it is. So, I mean, you could be sad for a little while, but we, we, we have to... Uh, be sad with an understanding be sad and know that that's just how it was supposed to go i don't know who that was for but that was for somebody tonight hallelujah um let me see what else grandmama grandmama ain't doing well it looked like it was the middle of the afternoon and ain't nobody seen grandmama face she in the kitchen phone clothes or whatever she was doing and Derek sits down and is talking to her and finally looks her square in the face and you can see she's been you know beaten in the face and he asked her what's going on and you know we get the tea she was raped and i again i know it happens but i just really i could have turned excuse me i could have turned on law and order svu for this because we did this in season one with simone uh being raped we, we did that so we don't have to every other season we're gonna have a, a character being raped i just we don't have to we don't have to i know it's a very prevalent thing i know it happens every day every hour uh, every second every minute uh, every twinkling of an eye, a little, a little piece of a uh, Shirley seizure for you. And I did say seizure. Um, I know it happens all the time and it's very prevalent and you know, all the girls. Uh, but dang, I be watching TV to get away from the realities of the world, but the realities of the world are always on TV these days. It drains me. But let me go and get this out of the way because I don't want to continue to be drained the rest of this, uh, this review. Finally, you know, Derek gets out of his grandmother what what may have gone on he calls the police or she i guess she tells him that they broke into the house or something she doesn't tell him the whole story they call the police um the grandmama's clothes the police officer finds the grandmama's clothes and i'm like what i don't understand how where, what we came in for a break-in but then we found the grandmama's clothes like what did they tell the police for the police to come here because from, the boy didn't know his grandmama was sexually assaulted, so he called the police. I'm assuming he called the police about break-in. So why, when the police get there, they find the grandmama's clothes and they indicate that she may have been sexually assaulted without ever having a conversation with her? If you here for a break-in and you see some clothes that look like they may have been ripped off, grandmama might just be freaky. We don't know. We don't know. And I'm not, you know, taking away from nothing, but I just try, I'm trying to get to the understanding of how we assume that this is the grandmama got raped. How the police get there? How did the police get there? She did. She did. But how did the police get to that conclusion? Didn't make sense to me. She asked the grandmama nothing. She didn't talk to the grandmama. She just pulled Derek aside and said, these clothes look like maybe she was sexually assaulted. But you here for a robbery. Why are you looking at clothes to begin with? <clears throat> the ghetto. The ghetto. Um, but anyway, Derek wants grandmama to go to the hospital. Grandmama says, no, ain't nobody touching me. I ain't having it. Not, not today, not tomorrow. Um, but Alex then, um, and again, like I said, I'm getting this out of the way, so this is not in exact order of how it went, but Alex talks to grandma and says, you know, they, they talking over a joint. I didn't see Alex puff once, but maybe I, I had looked away, but, um, you know, she said she smoked weed on occasion and she'd be in there stealing the grandmama joints and whatever, but they were sitting there commiserating over, you know, the weed and it just, she was saying that she was in a plane crash and Ebony died. Like I said, she looked like an Ebony to me. That's what we're going with this. We're going to call her Ebony and I just, I'm sorry. No disrespect again to Bianca's way. She looked like an Ebony. Actually, I think she reminds me of Ebony from America's Next Top Model. Maybe that's what it is. I don't remember Ebony. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, but that's kind of what Danielle would like look like had she cut her hair. I'm talking about America's Next Top Model. It, either way. <laughs> either way. Um, she talking about how Ebony done died, Lord, and she, she feels so bad. And the grandmama said, it's not your fault. And she said to the grandmama, this ain't your fault either. And somehow that miraculously got grandmama to go to the doctor. So they're going down to the hospital and they're sitting in the hospital. They've been there for hours. And uh, Alex gets up and says, hey, y'all see me and my grandmama sitting down here like, girl, can you, hello? And the nurse has the nerve to say, why are you here? What, what are you here for? And I'm 
I'm saying? Like, excuse? What? Then we sign in, we the only people sitting out here. You don't know what we're here for? The ghetto. And um, Alex says, girl, we're here for a rape kit. Hello, aloha, bonjour, hola, bon nuit, because you got to go to bed. Yeah. Um, and he says, oh, I'm so sorry. We only have one nurse that is able to do that and do, 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 do. And I'm just like, what? What? Hey, you got one? How do you offer a service and you only have one nurse that can process these things? Just the one. It was on my nerves. And uh, he says, well, maybe I should come back tomorrow. And I'm like, that's not how rape kids work. That you need to, you need to get the evidence quickly, quickly, asexually. That's not, it's not a come back tomorrow. It's not a blood test, sweetness. You're collecting uh, DNA evidence. You're collecting vital evidence. That what the hell? I'm sorry, mama. I know you're watching. I'm so sorry. But what the hell? Because it don't make sense. And I know my mama, if she if she were a cousin, she would say the same thing. It don't make sense. Again, I'm so sorry, mother. <laughs> so eventually, I guess they went on and got the kid done. I she hollered at him and you know said, "We ain't coming back tomorrow. We gonna be right here. Come on and get this test done." She ain't say it like that because she ain't Southern. But that's what she was trying to say if she had been Southern. And so that's that on that. Let's move along because I'm tired. It's just bringing me down. It's bringing me down. The weight of the world. Um, let me see here. Uh, apparently, according to the woman, the uh, the new owner of the company, his wife, according to her, Simone and her ain't sleep together. I don't know if I believe her. I don't know. Um, but at least this is giving me a little context about, you know, where we was going with the Karen thing. Because the thing is, they introduced Karen and all of a sudden Simone just loves her. I love her so much. I love her. And then they introduced Angel. And it's like, why is these two homosexuals going together? And it's just, it, it, it baffled me. It made no sense. Um, but now we got her back with a woman. Because it's like, y'all introduced her. And I understand bi bisexuality exists. Like, I, don't get me wrong. I get it. But usually they don't introduce a, a um, same-sex character just out of the blue like they did. Unless we finna go on a gay journey. We got to go on a gay journey. But she wasn't going on a gay journey. They introduced the same-sex uh, love attraction uh, character. And then she went on a, homo a, a heterosexual journey. And I said, now what is, what, what is this? What does this mean? So now we're going back on this journey. It took us a minute to get through this journey of discovery. Finding you, finding me. Oh yeah. Now that I have someone special who brings out the joy inside of me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just I did I did the most. I want the truck to settle down. She's making noises. I really wanted to go to Burger King, but they just closed. And I think it's ghetto, so I'm going up here to the 24-hour McDonald's. But that's not y'all's business. I ain't ate today. I haven't had a morsel all this heavenly day. I didn't eat till after midnight yesterday either, so I guess I have had a morsel on technically today. But today is now tomorrow, so I ain't had nothing today because it's after midnight again. Uh, because I've been grinding. Grinding like clips. Um... Anyway, they want to put Star in a movie with Noah because, you know, the new owner of the label, for some reason, they bought a music label, but they don't want to do music. They want to do movies and, 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 and other things. And I'm like, why would y'all write off Michael Michelle's character for this? Maybe she had other things she doing, but y'all know I stand for Michael Michelle, so I'm upset. I'm upset and I'm extra upset because, girl, not only did y'all shoot her last season, but then y'all told us she was pregnant at 517 years old. And so I'm sitting here waiting with bated breath interested to see where we're going with this. She was pregnant with High else baby, I'm assuming. And now she missing. Bought out by Enrique Iglesias. The ghetto. The ghetto. The ghetto. I want you to know that it's the ghetto. And I'm upset about it. Anyway. Um... Simone is over everything. Uh, what's, what's, uh, Carlotta has to tell the owner that no girl, she can't be in the movie, she's pregnant. Then it ends up on the gossip site. Star busts in the room talking about, who outed me? That belly girl, the ghetto. What are you talking about, who outed you? Do you see your stomach? Cause we do. We're looking dead at it. If they wouldn't have introduced her in the first scene of the season as um, looking in the mirror at her pregnant belly, we would have noticed it. It's like when they were trying to hide Carrie Washington behind plants and flowers and, and uh, purses and, uh, and, and, and uh, Bellamy Young. <laughs> like they're just, we see you, girl. 
we see each other. Me and the baby look at eye to eye. When you look into each other's eyes. Oh, let me get over here. I wonder what Tevin Campbell's doing. Put it in the comments if you know what he's up to. Um, Starbucks in the owner's office is mad because why would you put, you know, my tea out there for everyone to see? And, you know, he was like, girl, we are, we, we trying to sell tea. It's but we generating buzz. How you doing? I ain't gonna hit you, Reverend. I'm a good long ways away from you. <laughs> Ghetto. Anyway, um, yeah, so they doing all of that and she mad, she busts up in there and then she throws up on his shirt. And I'm like, you really finna raise somebody and you acting childish like this. Like it's one thing to be mad, but to vomit on someone. Like I don't like him either, but to vomit on him. First of all, disgusting. Second of all, you are you look like you're far enough in your pregnancy to not be having all this morning sickness. No shade. I know the girls have it in all different stages, but on TV you have morning sickness before you start showing, then you start showing and you're fine. Um, so I don't know. But anyway. Um Lance Gross approaches Noah. Noah says, no. Nah. Um, and says, You weren't there for me when I was in rehab. And I'm just like, was he supposed to come sit and hold your hand? Like y'all wasn't never best friends. I'm confused. I'm confused. What did you want him to do? And you know, I, I don't see a Lance Gross's character in this in this uh, show. Um, but what did you want him to do, girl? I'm confused. Um, Star didn't tell Cotton that she's pregnant, and I'm like, where has Star been living? Where's she been at to where these girls are surprised that she in her seventh month of pregnancy? Call me, Mike. Somebody call me and let me know. Has she been living somewhere? I know in the first scene of the season, she was looked like she was at a hotel or something, but was that her house? The ghetto. Um, I don't know what this... Oh, yeah. Okay. Jaden is sitting at the table. We know Jaden is Cotton's son. He's sitting at the table drawing his granddaddy that got shot. And I'm just like, ooh, that's a lot. I ain't never... I've never... In my whole 24 years of being alive and existing, I have never uh, drawn a shot person. Never. I've never drawn a dead person that I can think of. Uh, no. No. And I understood death very early. I just did. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but he says his grand... Um, well, Cotton says, you should draw your super, superhero. And he says, well... Grandpa was my superhero. He saved my life. And I'm like, oh, well. Got you there, Kat. Got you right there. <laughs> yeah, you, you've been gotten. So anyway, Twitter is ab ablaze with the news of Star's pregnancy. And I'm like, y'all have not been looking at her. It's crazy. They speculate that Beyonce pregnant every twit. Well, she's Beyonce. She's Beyonce. <laughs> like, but they speculate that folks are pregnant constantly. Ain't nobody ever said on the Twitter... You know, I think Star Davis might be a little pregnant. Just a piece, a piece pregnant, just a slice. Like, I just, I don't know. I got all that. Let me make sure my door It wasn't. Ain't nobody coming for me, but, you know, my mama, she might text me tomorrow and be like, did you lock your door while you were sitting outside that McDonald's like that to get her? Um, Miss, Miss Bruce, I guess, is their new manager or something. I didn't realize that Carlotta wasn't their manager no more. I missed that. But Miss Bruce is coming in and telling the girls what to do. Which, you know, I'm here for it because... You know, I'm always here for Miss Bruce. She's actually my favorite. <laughs> Miss Lawrence is a fave of mine anyway. And seeing Miss Bruce, you know, I stand. I stand like this. I love it. No, Tamar Braxton. Ain't nobody gonna know what I'm talking about. Tamar Braxton has a song called I Love It. And I actually love that song. But anyway. Um, so they trying to do the song for the, the uh, movie. Uh, for the soundtrack or whatever. And... Alex gets the call about, you know, they gra the grandmama and she goes over and, you know, the grandmama's the baby. She takes care of the grandmama. When she gets there, Derek says he's going to go find the man who did this. And he proceeds to leave these two women alone in the house by themselves. And look, like, I understand anything a man can do, a woman can do and all of that, but chivalry <laughs> chivalry he didn't even ask like well y'all are y'all gonna be comfortable here by yourself while i go out here and try to find this man and murder him or whatever like you just left your feeble grandmama and your ptsd ridden girlfriend alone together while you go out and... i don't even have to say it you know what i'm thinking but i'm gonna say it anyway the ghetto um 
Noah walks over to Star and says, hey girl, how's it going? Um, is that my baby? Star says, hey, how are you? No. <laughs> and I'm just like, dang, I kind of would have wanted it to go this direction. Um, for the simple fact that I'm tired of Noah's storyline being, hey, love drugs, big fan of drugs. Um, I love doing drugs. I love being around those that do drugs because they give me drugs to do. Let's do a little cocaine. Let's have a little, you know, a little, a little maybe a little snort, a little, some heroin or something, you know, get your spoons out and just do your thing. I'm tired of that being his storyline. If we're going to utilize the beauty that is Luke James, I, you know, I guess I would have wanted to see him do more, do more. Um, but I guess there, his daddy pop around. We're going to get to that. Also, I don't know. It just kind of. I don't know, maybe I'm a little piece of racist, but it's bugging me that Star is so black in action, but then she having a white baby. But we're going to get to that, too. <laughs> we're going to get to that as well. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Cotton pops in on Cassie and asks to help, asks Cassie to help her find who killed her daddy. And Cassie says, yes, anything uh, that I can do, I will do. And I'm just like... Oh. Oh, if, <laughs> if only you knew, Cotton, that your auntie, your very own Titi, your Titi, is the one, the ghetto. I'm a, I feel for Cotton. I'm going to be so hurt for her uh, when she actually finds out. Because she, I mean, she went to, Ka to uh, Cassie in prayer, in contrition, in please help me. I can't eat. I can't sleep anymore. Like, help me. And it just, it hurts me. Um, we at this press conference for this movie. And I'm like, y'all just told us about this movie this morning. But okay. Um, Star looks so much better with this straight, you know, natural, semi-natural hair. I know it's an extension or two in there or whatever. But she looks good with just, it just, just laying like it lays. I prefer Simone, you know, Simone looks all right with it, with it straight too, but I prefer it to be curly on Simone. That's cute. Star, straight, that's it. That's stay right there. I know she won't. And Alex, you know, you can do a little versatile, but that short choppy bob wasn't it. I loved it when you gave us the straight where it was just straight back, cute. I love when you give us a little piece of a wavy, real, real cute. Don't give us that short bob on Simone or Star anymore. Neither of them are Etta James and Cadillac Records, so that little, um, that little flush to the neck piece that Star had on, don't give us that no more either. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, but anyway, they at the press conference and the question is all, hey Star, uh, who your baby daddy? And Star said, that's not your business. And then they asked Noah, hey Noah, are you Star's baby daddy? Noah's like, hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> And then Simone wants to talk about the stuff and they're like, well, we really want to know who Star Baby Daddy is. And then Star gets up and storms off and that's that. <laughs> Andy invites Noah to a dark and, and seedy parking lot to ask him for some money. And Noah says, no, but God bless. <laughs> Love you so much. Uh, also, God bless. Praying for you. Praying for you. If I hear any opportunities, I pass them your way. <laughs> and then goes on about his day. Uh, let me see. Simone, for some reason, busts into the auditions and wants to audition for the movie that they offered to Star, but Star can't take it because she's pregnant. Um, and they say, no, we don't know you. <laughs> we, I, who are you? And Simone is like, I am this character. I grew up in foster care and I have been abused and I, I, I fight people and I, you know, I'm that girl, I'm her. And if you ever talk to my sister crazy again, I'm going to you know, kill you. And then she storms off. So she was like half auditioning, half threatening. And you see the wife smile. And I'm like, Lord, we really finna go through this with the wife. And then you hear uh, en Enrique Iglesias say, Simone Davis, right? And I'm like, you know, you know her name. Come on, take three and Noah Brooks are your two biggest selling artists. You know her name. Don't do that. Don't play games like that. I hate when niggas do that. Um. Anyway, Cassie approaches Noah over joining her and Lance Gross's business. And he envisions himself singing this little yachty so sounding song. And then he says, yeah, I'll do it. And I'm like, all throughout this, this uh, visual that he's seeing in his mind where he's singing this song. That, again, sounds like something little yachty would be singing. You have Brandy. Brandy, in the words of Chris Brown. Brandy. Standing over to the side, swaying back and forth, and just like, hey, I love it. Utilize Brandy. Let her sing. Why is she here if not to sing? 
Y'all let Queen Latifah have five or six songs. Brandy has not had Oon. And I'm upset about it. Upset about it. Y'all let Miss Bruce sing. Brandy, the only thing she was able to do was go on in this church and sing with uh, Patti LaBelle and, uh, and, and Dana Owens. And I'm tired. I'm tired. <sighs> Let me see. Noah then tells Cassie, hey, why don't you um invite Andy? You remember my friend Andy? We, we, we used to work together. We was there together. And she's like, Andy? Yeah, he just got back in town. Oh, did? Huh. Look at that. And so now she knows Andy's in town. Um, let me see, let me see. Carlotta, Carlotta and Cassie meet up and she's wearing a poor quality wig. Carlotta is. And uh, they have, a you know, an argument and I'm through with your lies. And, and then, you know, Cassie says, tell Andy I said what's up. And she said, Andy, what you talking about? And then she said, who lying now? And I said, nobody. She didn't lie to you. She asked you what she was talking about. That's not a lie. That's a question. You can't ask a question and it be a lie. You can't. There's no way. You can ask a question and imply a lie. Like, I could ask uh, Queen Latifah, is it true that you're straight? And the answer may or may not be a lie. I don't know. Not my business. I could ask, is it true that you're gay? Either way, it could be <laughs> imply. It could imply a lie. But I cannot ask a question and it be a lie. Impossible. Impossible. Um, let's see. So, this song, we've been hearing the dun, dun, dun. Da, da. this little music all throughout the episode and they was trying to write this song for the movie but then it turned into another star getting everything off her chest song and I'm like how how were we mad before when she doing the same thing now it's just not directed at y'all but she's singing this song now ask me one more time who's my baby dad I'm the, I'm immaculate I'm a miracle I'm the man and I'm just saying here like but but you're not a man you may be that nigga you may be the man, but you're not a man. You did not create that baby by yourself. My mama loves to say that all the time. Oh yes, you were immaculate conception. No, I wasn't sweetness. I was, uh, I was sperm meeting an egg. That's what I was. They came together, created, you know, the doll, the goddess, the girl, that girl, me. Um, but I, it's, there's no immaculate conception there. It's just, it's just, it's just impossible. Um, and I want the girls to stop telling these lies. Um, anyway, they decide they're going to drop this song, um, without anybody's knowledge. It's the first single on the album and yada yada. I don't care. Simone is on FaceTime with her husband and she asked him for a divorce, completely blindsided the homosexual. <laughs> he was just like, oh. Oh, the ghetto, my cover, my cover. And it's like, but, like, I know you liked her, but you, 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 you was aware. <laughs> you were aware um, that y'all got married to keep you in the country and you still got deported. Um, and you were also aware that she was madly in love with Karen right before she was madly in love with you. Um, so I feel like this shouldn't really have been, he shouldn't have took it as seriously as he did, but he did. Um, Alice has a decent po ponytail. She did. I wrote that in my notes so I wouldn't forget to tell y'all that the ponytail was good. It was a good ponytail. It had good bones. You know, your ponytail has to have good bones. Can't be too thin. Can't be too thick. Had good. It laid just right. Wonderful. Beautiful ponytail. Um, Alex and Derek, who just learned how to, just relearn how to walk, and Grandmama in this house together is a house full of broken people and it's going to get on my nerves. If they play this up, like I think they're going to play this up, it's going to get on my nerves. Same thing with Star and Carlotta and Cotton and Simone all being in the same general vicinity. That's going to get on, you know, they, they're, everybody's broken. Everybody's broken. We need T.D. Jakes to come in and get us, get our lives in order. We need them. Anyway, um, Cotton convinces Star to tell the baby daddy he the baby daddy. Girl, the ghetto. I feel like I'm crawling on my leg and I won't stand for that. I can't go for that. Whoa, whoa. So we get this split scene where, and I knew it wasn't going to be, because girl, they don't shoot scenes like this unless they're trying to deceive you. For TV watchers who were deceived, I want you to know that they're not going to, if they're going to have um, something be direct and is what it is, they wouldn't have had Star walking down the street and Noah in the house and then 
you know, she's standing outside of a door and we see the inside of Noah's door and she walks up to the door and she knocks and then we hear that Noah hears a knock and he opens the door and whoever's, you know, opening the door for Star, they open the door. Like, it, it don't nobody shoot scenes like that unless they're trying to deceive you. So I was fully aware that it wasn't Noah and I was a little disappointed, but anyway, uh, he opens the door and it's his daddy. And I'm like, Dean, please go back over there to Florida. Go back over there with Desna and Karuchi Tran and live your life. I don't want you over here aggravating this boy. He on drug. He he has a drug problem. Leave him alone. Leave him be. Um. But then you see the door open for Star, and it's the white boy that I forgot all about, and apparently he the baby daddy. And she gives him the ultrasound, and he's not ready to be a father either because he has these blonde tips. Anybody that dyes the tips of their hair blonde as a white man um, or a black man is not ready to be a father. Unless you're Jason Momoa, where he highlighted his hair and got a little ombre, but he has long flowing hair. But if you if your hair is long or this long and the tips are blonde, it's just not cute. I don't know why y'all let Odell Beckham uh, Jr. tell y'all that that was the look, but I promise you. As a grown woman in her mid-twenties, it's not it. I am not dating somebody with blonde tips. I'm not dating a man who has the tall, curly with the blonde and the bang. I'm not doing it. Odell Beckham Jr. is cute to me, but he's cute over there. He's cute. I've seen a picture of him with his hair cut, you know, in, in a haircut. You know, just cut down to the head, shaped up nicely. And I was like, okay, I can do. I can do. It wasn't blonde. It was just a good old natural brown. I said, okay, he's cute here. He's cute. But this blonde, I want you girls to stop. Stop. Stop it. Anyway, I'm going to upload this and I'll call y'all later. Peace.